Hello everyone, this is Dave here. Today we are bringing the new 10th anniversary edition of Railways of the World to the table. The expandable game of worldwide railroad building. This is published by Eagle Griffin Games. And today what I'm going to be doing is a comparison video between this new shiny new 10th anniversary edition and a copy of Railways of the World that I've had for uh, a little while now. So I'm um, going to show you what's different between the two, what the changes are in the new 10th anniversary edition, and so it can give you an opportunity to decide if you want to stick with this one if you already own it or jump into this new one and upgrade your game, or if you're new to the whole Railways of the World system, you can decide um, if it's worth purchasing this new copy opposed to tracking one down from before. Anyways, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start from the exterior and work to the interior, look at all the differences, and I'll share those with you. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're going to start with the exterior of the boxes. And I want you to see that uh, from the get-go, the new 10th anniversary edition has a thicker box. So it looks like we are about um, between a half and three quarters of an inch thicker. Uh, so we're gonna have a little bit more room for storage in the new edition. Also, if you notice, you can see a little bit of glare on the top of the box. This has got more of a glossy finish. And the new uh, 10th anniversary edition has the same type of feel as other games that uh, have been released recently from Eagle Griffin, such as Lisboa or The Gallerist or uh, The Vinos Deluxe. So this one, Real Ways of the World, looks like it has gotten a deluxe treatment as well. If we spin these around, uh, one thing to notice on the side, we've got nothing here, but we do have a little bit of these finger guides on the side for taking the lid off of there. Also, uh, fresh artwork, uh, even on the box cover. So if you look over here, we can see um, it has kind of a uh, more of a like a, a pencil sketchy type um, artwork that's been colored in. And if we look over here, there seems to be a lot more detail, especially when it comes to the mountains on the game. Of course, we have the 10th anniversary banner there. So those are the uh, differences uh, looking from the outside of the box. Okay, now we have the two boxes opened up and let's look at the uh, box material itself. And if you look at the original edition, it's just your standard box. Cardboard is not real thick. If you look over here in the 10th anniversary edition and you can see that it is much much thicker so this is the same type of treatment again games like uh, the gallerist and Lisboa have gotten and they've done the same thing down with the uh, base of the box too here so you can see this is thinner this is much thicker one nice thing in the new edition you have this slot here where you can reach in and be able to pull out all your boards and maps and if we look over here we don't have anything so a little bit more convenient a little bit more durable box all around for the new 10th anniversary edition now that we've got the two of them open uh, let's see we've got let's let's start with the old version <coughs> there was a, a separate rule book that for each thing in here so we had this railways of the world and this was like an overview of how to play the game it had all the rules uh in here uh that were a general guideline that's going to be the same for all of the railways of the world maps and then um had some illustrated examples in here a little bit of the history of the trains that were uh used in the game uh, the credits and then on the back there was a uh, summary of actions and then when you got to the two maps that came in the game railways of Mexico and the eastern US they had their own separate maps with their own additional rules as to how the game was going to be played so if you look in here those would be uh, so you had to use three different books two books at a time when you're playing the game the new edition now there is a comprehensive rule compendium that has everything in here it's got a little bit of a, a different layout 
Uh, obviously, it's color more uh, colored it's with the background. But uh, here is the overview of the Railways of the World system with the components that come in the game, uh, explanation of all the actions. And what they've done is they've, they have a bit of a more um, comprehensive and clear, clearer rules as to how to get the game set up. And it uh, goes into detail about all your actions that you can take to, that go on during the game. And then uh, there is a spot that talks about all the mini expansions. Here's like the event deck and some of the different things that you can use in the game. Uh, fuel depots, mines. Uh, there's these little city rotors that come in the uh, railways of the western U.S. that you can use now. Uh, they talk about some of the hotels, a few other different things, switch tracks. All of these are uh, available that you can get separately too to add to the game. They just they change up the way things go. But there's rules for how to use all of them. And then there's also the transcontinental rules, which was something that was integrated uh, and introduced in the Railways of the North America expansion. This will the rules for you to combine the Eastern U.S. and Western U.S. maps. So we have the rules right here. And then once we get into uh, the back, there are the, the rules for each of the different expansions. So here's the railways of the eastern U.S. So this is specific rules for this map that will go along with uh, the base rules. And then we look here, we have railways of Mexico, railways of Europe, railways of the western U.S. We also have the uh, railways through time and... We look, we have railways of Great Britain, railways of North America, and railways of Nippon, which is the newest map that came out. It's releasing the same time as this 10th anniversary. And we also have railways of Portugal, which is going to be coming. And uh, this is going to be worked on by Vito Lacerda, so something to get excited about. And then uh, in the back, we have uh, the history of all the trains. Here's all the credits of people that worked on all of the different maps. And then something nice, there is an index uh, or appendix of all the Rail Baron cards. So this, these are all of them that have been used uh, throughout the game uh, for each of the different maps. So you can get additional rules on there, see what's all in there. And then also there is an appendix of railroad operation cards. Uh, and so there's some clarifications about all the symbols and how these are all going. So for example, here the Black Star, any of the ones that have black stars on them, they're from the Mexico deck and they become optional. So we have a listing of all of this information in here. So this is definitely uh, way, way, way better. Uh, first of all, having it all in one place, opposed to having to go with separate rules. But if you look at this, this is a lot thicker. These other things were just, you know, a couple pages, and then these rules were just, uh, you know, a single fold uh, page. So that's the rule books. We uh, then look at here. Let's go back to the old version and let's look at the scoring board that comes with the original game and. If we look at it, it looks like just a bunch of rows with track. And as our points go up, here's our income. And I'm just going to trace it down. And when we get to the bottom, there was this little arrow that would show you where uh, that you needed to go back up to the top and start working your way back down. Uh, actually, you follow this up. I'm sorry. And we get all the way up to the top, and then there's a little arrow that tells you to go down. And it could be very, very confusing. In fact, you saw I was kind of getting confused there. Look at this new one. The new map has this um, winding score track. So no confusion here. As you can see, we just follow along. Now, uh, something that has been changed, and if we look down here at the income level for uh, your points... When you're at 98 points and 99 points, your income is $9. So if you played this game, you know there's kind of a bell curve for your income. Over here, we have the income is at $10. And this is uh, now made, this is a universal scoring board for uh, several of the maps, including railways of, the, of North America, in which there was a change in the income levels there at the end to go from 9 to 10 so the new edition, you will be playing with this level of income. This one 
you're playing with the old. And there's also some rule tweaks uh, when you actually score more than 100 points and you go back up, your income level is going to stay um, here. It does not drop back down to uh, zero. <coughs> So that was a clarification that I saw in the rule. So that's kind of nice. But uh, definitely an improvement on the two scoring tracks here, having this winding one opposed to having to look at these different arrows for you to be able to navigate along there. So uh, let's take a look at the maps. So I have the two Mexico maps on the table. Uh, for starters in this one, it's a little bit easier with these. I'll bring out the Eastern US one shortly. But uh, if you can tell already that there has been uh, new artwork on the maps, you can see the old one over here. This is all the mountainous areas. Whereas over here, you can see it's a lot easier to distinguish where the mountains are. Now there are some significant changes to the map in terms of graphic design that are going to make it uh, much easier to understand. Let's look at the old one. And the biggest thing was confusion upon where all these water hexes are and what constitutes if this is wet or not. You can see along the edge of the board and uh, down along the coastline. And if you can see some of these hexes down here that go along the edge, well, you don't know. That's partially in the water. That's partially in the water, you know. So even though you run along the coast, it's not really, you don't see water running through it. Could be confusing. Sometimes it's just common. But over on the new maps now, any spot that there is uh, water along here, there are these water droplets. So it makes it uh, easier to distinguish because that's going to affect your cost in building over uh, these hexes. So you can see them along here. Uh, the other thing too, where there were mountains, uh, you can see that there was this uh, little marks for the mountains on there. They're kind of small. And then you can see along certain things when you're going over a ridge, there was the line there. Um, could be slightly confusing. Over here, you look in the map. Here we have larger markings for the mountains. You can easily see that. And then here we have uh, this spot for going over a ridge. And that is uh, a little bit, or a lot easier to see with the bold red lines on the map. It matches every all the other red hexes, uh, but they had this black line. It wasn't really thick and you could easily miss out on that. I think that this is uh, much nicer. <coughs> the other thing is, uh, this was always confusing, the round one, two, and three. Here's the new turn phases. It includes the auction and then also your dividends and then bringing out new operation cards. So this is the uh, this is definitely uh, easier to understand uh, what's going on. We'll just use an empty city marker to, to which I haven't gotten to those yet, to, uh, to, start to show where we are at. So that's a big change over there. One other thing, on the new map, if we look over here, there is a space for all of the uh, turn order markers. So players will put one of the control locomotives on there, and you can see uh, where the turn order is. We do not have that over in the old map. Now there is another thing that they talk about some major lines and these are where you can score points by connecting uh, certain areas on the map and let's look at the old one over here. Um, here for example El Paso to Guadalajara it's going to be worth six points. Now my camera is right up on top of this so it's really difficult to see that's a small print on this. If you're sitting away from the board like this even and I said, well, how many points is that? You're like, I don't know. So you'd really have to look and see, okay, maybe even like Manzanillo to Selena Cruz is four points. Uh, over here, it's a lot easier to uh, see what they are on the major lines. Now, another thing that's kind of interesting, uh, they gave you a tip um, in the new rules to put markers on the board, just like use, like if you have glass beads or something, to uh, determine where they are. So, for example, if I went to Manzanillo, I could put a marker on this and I can go to Salina Cruz, which is one of the purple ones, and it is down here. And now I, you can distinguish just by matching up the markers what types of 
uh, where the major lines are. You can connect them together. So here, for example, we go to El Paso and Guadalajara. Well, there's El Paso. I can put a marker up there. And we go down to Guadalajara, which is right here. And so you can see, you can make markers on there. That was like one of the tips that they showed for uh, using the boards. But I wanted to talk about that with the major lines. So you can see that this is a different uh, graphic design. This is easier to see uh, than the old one. And uh, also the uh, white font seems to stand out a bit more than the black. So complete redesign of the maps. Uh, like I said, this is Mexico. Let's take a look at the um, Eastern USA real quick. Okay, so we have railways of the Eastern USA. This is the old map. So we'll just go along and show you, again, trying to distinguish these bold, black bold lines for these different ridges. And you go along certain areas, you may not know where the water is, uh, you do still have the little marks for the mountains that distinguish those. And I'll try and hold this back because this is a really, really huge map. So uh, this is the old map. Again, only has the round one, two, and three on there. And um, in the eastern map, there used to be these cards that you would have to play. Uh, these major lines would come out. So these have been eliminated in the new edition, which I'm going to go ahead and pull up the uh, old map, right, or pull up the new map right now. So we'll get this one out of the way and we'll take a look at the new one. So you can see railways of the Eastern US is a lot larger. Uh, the cities, the text is a lot easier to see. Uh, here they use the black with the white outline, but it just, it seems to, stand out a bit more. Uh, it doesn't look as busy because they muted like some of this grassland area. Again, we have our mountains and then over here, um, they use the red bold lines to see along the ridges. Still have to look, still have to look a little bit closer on here. Let me zoom in. You can see where we're going over ridges in the mountains. Um, but you can see again, graphic changes in the new map. Down at the bottom we have our turn phase, again just like we have in the Mexico map with turn order. And then down here we have the major lines that are going to be available for scoring. Again, use your glass beads or whatever markers you want to use for those on here. Uh, one other tip that they gave in the rule book is uh, there are going to be certain cities that will have a service bounty on them, so the first person to deliver goods to. Let's just say that there was one in uh, Lexington and it would be worth uh, four points. You could just put a die on there to just to show how many, um, how much in your income is going to increase with a service bounty by using the little D6s. And then as soon as somebody claims that service bounty, you just take it off the board. So this is something, uh, another tip that came in the rule book, but you can see here that there is uh, quite a bit of change to the map. Sorry, I'm moving around. This map is huge. This is actually a six fold map, takes up quite a bit of space, but uh, this is the railways of the Eastern US map. So let's get back into the box and look at more components. Now that we have the maps out of the way, we can take a look at the inserts that come with the game. The 10th anniversary edition has a custom insert and it also has a clear plastic lid that uh, fits over it that will keep all the components in place. I just have that set off the side because there's a glare. Uh, the old version came with an insert as well, but it did not have a lid. And if you look at the layout, they are slightly different. So we see things at the top. Here we have more of these components. And there's also this tray down at the bottom, which is kind of nice. So let's start with this section here. This is a removable tray, which we'll take that out. And we'll talk about that in a minute. Down here are all of the hex tiles that we will need for use in the Railways of the World system. There are 217 of these bad boys. And so it's a nice to have this big well of them to all fit in. We look over in the, the original... Uh, railways version that I have and I have a, a section here but they won't all fit so I have several of them bagged up here and the remainder of the 217 are in a bag here that go into uh, another section.
there. So it's nice to have that. Uh, well, let's look at this insert that's right here. So the first thing that we have, we have bond certificates. They come in denominations of 1, 5, and 10. And these are about the same size of cards that you'd have like in a Settlers of Catan deck. And we look at the bond certificates that come in the other version. So they're about the same height. However, these are a little bit uh, narrower. And when you look at how they are uh, arranged, we look at this. So they're quite a bit smaller. Um, still say one bond. This I think is a little bit clearer to see if when you have it on the table. That's just going to be a matter of preference. Uh, but I think I might be a little bit more partial to the original bond certificates. But these still look good and they're functional. They take up less space. And this uh, game is a table hog, so as you saw from the map. So maybe we need to have some little smaller. Um, start player marker is a little wooden train. The uh, original game comes with just this card, first player card. So something smaller, again, taking up less of a, a footprint of extra stuff that we don't really need on the table. And finally, there is uh, paper money that comes in the game. It comes in denominations of $1,000, $5,000, $10,000. And uh, paper money came in the original game, too. Uh, same denominations, just different colors. If we look at them side by side, though, there is less paper money in the new version because the paper seemed to be about the same thickness. Um, I didn't really do like comparison of weight of the paper, but uh, there is significantly less in this stack. If we push them down, you look on the side there, there is uh, quite a bit more paper money in the old version. So this one fits in this tray right here. That was only like one extra uh, dot, 10,000 bill that was in there. Uh, this uh, fit in the slot here, so actually the insert did have space for that. Uh, the bond certificates fit right next to them here, like this. And then this space is for where they would have the operations cards for one of the decks. So uh, this again over here, we have this tray, start player marker, bond certificates, and this just sets in right here. Now, for the operations cards over here, we have two separate compartments. So you can see in between there, and I'll get to these in a minute. Uh, but over here, there are dividers that come in here in case we decide to get the expansion for Railways of the World event deck. There's room for those. And there's going to be the Railways of the Eastern US and Railways of Mexico that uh, will fit in here. I have both of the, the decks out for these two games to do a comparison of these because there's some uh, interesting changes that come in the game in terms of clarification. Uh, let's look at the original Railways of the World. This is the player reference card. And uh, I've, I really like the size of the font on here. It tells you the actions, building track, uh, urbanize, which um, is developing cities, um, upgrading engines, delivering goods, and taking operation cards. Those are the different things that you can do. And then here are the, the costs to build track in the Eastern USA uh, game. So, to, like, so you can see the dollar amounts. Crossing a ridge says $4,000 additional, and then it talks about building the Western Link. Um, so that's the one side of the reference card. If we look at the new updated railways of Eastern USA, um, we look at them side by side. This one, the text is a little bit smaller, but there's more information on here. And once you start playing the game, um, you don't really use these so much, but uh, it is nice to look at your cost. But if we look down at the actions, everything's the same with the exception of building fuel depots. This is an available action if you're using the fuel depot mini expansion. So they just put that on there as one of the things that's available and the cost. Everything else is the same. We look at over here. Uh, these, the urbanized action, tells you it's $10,000. We get to the middle, the cost of building the track, and there's some clarifications. It tells you now what each of these things, for example, the green hexes are open, the water droplets for the water, we talked about that on the map, now it tells you what the cost is for those. The mountains, which have the gray dot, and now it says connecting a ridge, and it talks about the dark red, the, the dark red hexa, the bold hex side, and it's going to tell you how much that you need to spend additionally. 
One nice thing is on the player reference cards, it's going to tell you at the end of the game how many empty city markers are out there, how, what's going to trigger the end of the game. We did not have that on the reference cards before. And then if we flip these over and we look on the back, here are the major lines that are available. Uh, it's nice to have these on the reference cards, but they are now on the, the map too as well, as you can see. Uh, and again, the better graphic layout, you can see the point values much easier than they were here. So that's a comparison of uh, the reference cards that come in the two decks. And it's going to be very uh, similar for Mexico. I'll show off those cards briefly. Uh, the next thing is we have these railroad barons. And uh, so I'm just going to use this one as an example. Here's uh, James Fisk. And I bring over James Fisk from the new version. <coughs> and we can see that this is belonging to one of the USA uh, maps. So we have the USA flag. Uh, we have a slightly different uh, variation of graphic design. We got rid of these little um, things along the side. It was a, almost like a filigree. And uh, we went uh, to not having that. Um, looks more like a picture frame uh, around here. This looks almost like a reflection in a mirror. And they changed the font to make this have a little bit more of that western, uh, wet, like older time look. So it's going to be a matter of preference there. And then down at the bottom, uh, we have their ability. It says gain two points for each link that your railroad owns from Mobile to any other city. Now, this is one of the things that has been changed in the new version of the game. And it says uh, gain two points for each link that your railroad owns from Mobile to any other city, which we've got the same. However, it says limited to a total of eight bonus points. And this includes multiple links to the same city. So this is a clarification in the rules and also a limit. So this is something that is uh, definitely nice to see in the new version of the game. So we have the clarification and it's going to happen on a, uh, a few of the railroad barons are going to have this, uh, this extra text on there. So it's going to, this is definitely uh, better and does a little bit more of clarification and fixes some of the issues that people may have with the game. So that's with the railroad barons. There's 12 of them. They're the same for each version. Then we move over into, uh, into our regular, um, this would be the operations deck for rail, uh, railways of the eastern U.S. And if we look at the same thing over on the side over here, we have railways of the eastern U.S., railroad operations. I believe it's the same. Yeah, railroad operations. Uh, a couple of the things that there's, again, some clarification on some of the text. Let's look at this hotel. It just says hotel. And you don't know which hotel this affects, but it says down here, gain one point on the income track for each goods cube delivered to Boston, regardless of which player the delivery makes. Well, if we look over here now, there is specifically names to each of these hotels. So, for example, this is the Boston Hotel. Gain one point on the income track for each goods cube delivered to Boston, regardless of which player makes the delivery. Also, new image on there. So this is the old one. This is the new one. In fact, uh, these hotels, they, uh, I believe that these have a much better look uh, than these do. This can, it makes it uh, seem more age appropriate or era appropriate in the United States, these types of buildings. So we have that difference in the hotels. There's also going to be uh, some things that are going to affect, uh, let me look in this deck, there was, uh, oh, here we go, service bounties. This is something different too. This says the first player to deliver a goods cube to Jacksonville gains four additional points on the income track. So in the new ones, if we look uh, for the service bounties, we'll look in the back. I think they're down here. Um, here we go, Jacksonville service bounty. So this is going to tell me specifically uh, which city this is going to affect. So when these are available to be selected as railway operation cards, it is much clearer to see these in the new version than the old one. So some new changes in the text are um, much, much, much better in the uh, 10th anniversary edition with these cards over here than the uh, older version here. Um, also, you can see that there is a little bit of a difference. This has more of like a parchment look on the cards, just the background. These over here are a little bit more white. And then uh, one note, there are less of these operation cards in the new, in the 10th anniversary edition because 
they uh, eliminated these major line cards. These just kind of clogged up the deck, and sometimes it just became, uh, well, if these came out in the game, uh, somebody may have already done it, these would just be discarded and drawn anyways. These just make this available for anybody to be able to claim as soon as they do that. So like this said, the first player to connect uh, New York and Chicago gains 10 points on the income track. This is just available for everybody to do, so it's a change that way. All right. Ah, uh, so it's going to be the same thing. Let me quickly just show off what they did. Railways of Mexico. Now you have the Mexico map on the back, opposed to these other ones over here that just said Railways of Mexico. I always thought these were kind of look kind of. I didn't really like them, but uh, certainly uh, this Railways of Mexico over here and how it looks is much better than this. So <clears throat> they gave that a little bit of a nicer treatment. Okay. Um, the same, th these, then we have our locomotive placards, and these are the, these show you the different trains, and as you upgrade the different levels, they're a thick card stock. These are the same between both versions, so level one, level two. Uh, they didn't really do anything different in here, they kept them the, the same. Uh, level one, level two. And uh, these, they just lay flat in here. This, at least, there's a spot for them to stand upright in there, so just a little bit of a different thing. Uh, we look over at, there's some uh, bags that have uh, cubes in there. This was the original uh, bag. And uh, inside are the goods cubes that we use to seed the board. And when it's fully open, and I have pretty big hands, I can fit my hand in there, but not very easily. The new version of the game has an embroidered Railways of the World. And if I put these bags side by side, you can see that this one is larger and also wider than the previous one. So I can get my hands in here very easily. I can stick my whole hand in there. Inside we have the goods cubes that we will be using to seed the board. So this is much nicer and um, so definitely a plus. Now uh, we look in this back over at the original version. Let's look at these. These are the end of city markers and this is one of the things that really make the board look cool um, you have like these fuel these are these are your fuel depots these are your mines and we had hotels also um, and there was all these these switch tracks right here that you could put out and uh, every time that a city was out of goods, you would put these on the board, and it makes the board look really, really cool. They have since used these different components and made mini expansions, and they come in player colors. So uh, things have changed there. The new version of the game we have, these are the new end of city markers. And so if we look down here, it has the little wheel, and it says keep out with the, the skull on it. So this makes it look more appropriate if a city no longer has uh, goods in it, is to have one of these markers on there. So I think thematically that makes a better sense. Uh, they sit in there, there's enough for all the maps uh, over here. These look cool, but uh, I'll probably be getting the mini expansion to add uh, these into play. I think that uh, looking at the rules, they add some interesting things. So we're almost done. A uh, couple other changes in the game. Uh, there is now wooden scoring discs in the new version for uh, the scoring track, whereas the old version you just use the locomotives. And then finally, uh, the trains. Here's a set that are opened up. I'm just going to do a comparison from red to red. Down here, here is the um, here's a red train from the new version. Compared to these, this is this is like a bright red. This is a darker red, and also let me take one of these out, and uh, we'll take a look at them side by side because I think that these trains have a little bit more detail on them, the new sculpts than the previous one. But I might be wrong. Let's put these side by side and look. All right, old version and the new version. So maybe it's just the color. But it looks like it looks to me that maybe the newer version, the sculpt, look a little bit more detailed. But I might be wrong. Uh, but maybe along the edges there, if you look at how they're cut out, 
This just seems to be a little cleaner on the new ones. But um, there is a, just a slight color variation between the plate, between uh, these. The, this is a little bit more of a rustic look with this brick red opposed to like a bright red. And so that's going to be the same for all of the other uh, players that are in there. So uh, finally, there's just this, these are the same for the new city markers. They're in this uh, compartment back in here. You can see them underneath these markers. Uh, this is kind of nice, the special link there with the nail. That's for the Western link. And that is comparison between the 10th anniversary edition and the regular version. I appreciate you putting up with a lot of the camera moving around, but I really wanted you to see a lot of the pieces and I wanted to be able to handle them and see what it looked like as if you were sitting at the table yourself. So. Thank you for watching. Uh, hopefully this will give you an idea of already what's out there, what's coming out now, and uh, what you're going to do with your own uh, version of Railways of the World. For me, um, just a really quick overview and my thoughts on this is I like a lot of most of the things here in the 10th anniversary edition of the railways i would really like to have seen larger font like the like the original one on the player reference cards but i do appreciate the fact that there is more information on here as the things that you can do and again it's only a reference card it's a minor quibble overall i i prefer uh this 10th anniversary edition if i did not own this version of the game i would go ahead and purchase this one also um you see enough of the differences here that uh, if you wanted to upgrade, if you play this game a lot, I would recommend getting the new 10th Anniversary Edition. It clarifies a lot of things. Take your original version and either sell it or donate it or give it to a friend so that they can still play the game. It's still very, very functional. It's not a must, like it's not a must replace thing, but uh, just something that's my own personal preference. I much prefer this one. So anyways, thank you for watching and we'll talk to you again soon. Bye-bye.